Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MSFT webcast. This video provides step-by-step -step instructions for deploying DHCP failover in a test lab using two server computers and one client computer. A DHCP failover in Windows Server 2022 is a way to ensure that DHCP service is always available to clients. If the DHCP server fails to lease IP addresses to the clients, the entire network fails. Among other solutions to this issue, DHCP failover is preferred and the most commonly used. The way it works is that we have two DHCP servers working together. In case one fails, we have the second one who provides the service. First, let's understand the test lab we will use in this video. We have single domain active directory forest name msaptwebcast.com. We have two Windows Server 2022 domain controllers. The FQDN of this domain controller is srd22-dc01.msaptwebcast.com. Let's go to our second domain controller. The FQDN of this domain controller is srt22-dc02.msaptwebcast.com. To save time, I have already installed the DHCP server role on both DCs. Both DHCP servers are authorized in our active directory. I have already created a dedicated video on how to install and configure DHCP service on Windows Server 2022. The link to the video is provided in the description section. Please check out the video for more information. Let's start by creating a new DHCP scope and configuring DHCP failover on it. Click on Tools and select DHCP. Maximize the DHCP management console, expand server name and expand IP version 4. Right click the IP version 4 and select new scope. Click next. Type a name and description for this DHCP scope. Click next. Type IP address range for this DHCP scope. Start address will be 172.18.73.1 and the end IP address will be 172.18.75.254. The subnet mask is going to be 255.255.252. Click next. Click next. Set up lease duration as per your requirement. I'm going with the default lease duration which is 8 days. Click next. Click next to set up DHCP scope options. Add default gateways IP address. Type 172.18.72.1 and click on add. Click next. Already TNS server's IP address information is configured as this server is domain controller. Let me remove this DNS server's entry. Let's click next. Click next again. Click next. Click on finish to create a DHCP scope and activate it. We have successfully created a DHCP scope on our DHCP server and the scope status is active. The next step will be to configure DHCP failover for this scope. Right click on DHCP scope and select configure failover. Select all checkbox is selected. This will configure DHCP failover on all DHCP scopes. You can change this as per your requirement. Click next. Now choose the partner DHCP server using the partner server box and add server button. You can type the name or IP address of the partner DHCP server in the partner server box or browse for it using the add server button. Type srt22-dc01.msftwebcast.com and click next. Type a name next to relationship name or accept the default name that is displayed. I'm giving name MSFT DHCP failover. Leave the default settings for maximum client lead time. Next step is to specify the DHCP failover mode. We can use one of the load balance or hot standby mode. Using the load balance mode, both DHCP servers concurrently lease IP addresses to the clients. This is also referred to as active-active mode. 
That means both DHCP servers are active at the same time. They share the DHCP scope with one another and each one leads IP addresses to a specific number of clients in the network. The number of client each should serve is defined manually in percentage while we configure DHCP failover. When one DHCP fails, the other one takes the responsibility and leads IP addresses to all the clients. In hot standby mode, only one of the DHCP servers is leasing IP addresses to the clients at a time. The primary one leads IPs to the clients. The secondary one is in the standby mode and updates itself with a replication of the records from the primary server. The secondary one steps in only when the primary servers become unreachable or crashes for any reason. This mode is also referred to as active passive mode. That means only one DHCP server is active at a time. By default, load balance mode is selected and we will choose it. As we have discussed earlier that we can specify the percentage of load that each server takes on, which is normally 50-50. You can adjust it as per your requirement. Next, and the shared secret to enable message authentication. The shared secret password is used to secure the replication of DHCP database information between both DHCP servers. Now, let's click next to continue. On this page, we can see a short summary of our configuration. When ready, click on finish to complete the configuration. Verify that failover configuration was successful. And then click close. The DHCP failover configuration on DC2 is completed successfully. Let's go to SRT22-DC01 VM. Click on Tools and select DHCP to open DHCP Management Console. Expand server name and click on IP version 4. Verify that the same DHCP scope configuration that is present on DC2 is now also present on DC1. Under Failover Relationship, we can also see the name of our DHCP Failover Relationship, which is MSFT DHCP Failover. Right click the DHCP scope and click Properties. Click the Failover tab and review the information displayed on Failover tab. Verify that Normal is displayed next to State of the Server and also next to State of the Partner Server. We can also see Load Balance Percentage which is 50-50 in our example. Let's click on OK. We can also edit or delete the failover relationship. Right click IP version 4 and select properties. Go to failover tab, click edit and review properties of the failover relationship that are available to edit. From here, you can view or edit existing DSCV failover relationship. I'm going to click OK to close the properties window. Let's click OK. Let's click on Address Leases. And we have a one DHCP client computer who got the IP address from our DHCP server. Let's go to our client machine. This Windows 10 client is set to obtain IP address automatically from DHCP server. Right click on Start menu and select a Windows PowerShell. Type command ipconfig slash all and hit Enter key. Note the DHCP server that is currently assigning an IP address configuration to this client. The IP address of the DHCP server is displayed next to DHCP servers. In our case, currently SRT22-DC02 DHCP server is assigning an IP address to this client. For testing purpose, let's stop the DHCP server service on SRT22-DC02. Go back to SRT22-DC02. Right click on server name, all task and then click on stop. This will stop DHCP service on our server. The DHCP service is currently stopped on DC02. Let's go back to client computer. Note down the lease obtained and expire time. Type command rpconfig slash renew and hit enter key. Wait for DHCP server to renew the assigned IP address. Remember, the DHCP server service is not running on DC02. We got the IP address from the DHCP server. 
Now type command ipconfig slash all and hit enter key. Again check the DSCP server's IP address. This time it should be DC01 172.18.72.50. This is the IP address of DC01. Now most important part, check the lease obtained time. It should be same as the earlier. Let's check that. Lease obtained time is 435. We can see it is the same. Match the IP version 4 address as well. It is 172.18.73.1. This means DSAP failover on Windows Server 2022 is working as configured. To test DSCP failover relationship, we have stopped the DSCP server service on one of the DSCP server and perform IP address renewal process on our client computer, which was obviously successful. The client was successfully able to renew the IP address from the second active DHCP server. So we can safely say that we have successfully configured and tested DHCP failover on Windows Server 2022. That's all for this video on how to create and configure DHCP failover on Windows Server 2022. I hope you found this video useful. Please let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or suggestions. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.